So let's continue talking about sampling. We've been talking about sampling in time, and we've come up with this temporal sampling criteria, which we were able to derive by basically looking in the frequency domain at what we call the spectral width of the signal. Basically, how much frequency content is there of the signal, identify the maximum frequency, and then that told us how to sample. If our original continuous time signal was band limited to B, that means its spectral width was 2B, which means that we needed to sample at a rate of greater than 2B. That was the Nyquist criterion that we came up with. And basically what this lets us do is take a continuous time, time domain signal, sample it in time, so write down a list of numbers, and then we were able to perfectly reconstruct the continuous time signal from the samples. In this video, we're gonna do something similar, but we're gonna talk about sampling in the frequency domain. And since we're familiar with properties of the Fourier transform and how things in time and frequency often are somewhat similar, uh, it shouldn't be too surprising that we can come up with a similar sampling theorem, but more of a frequency domain sampling theorem. And what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to take samples of a spectrum in the frequency domain and perfectly reconstruct the time domain signal from the samples of the spectrum. So very similar in concept, just a little bit different. So this is what we want to derive. We want to derive what we're calling the spectral sampling theorem. And it's going to let us um, reconstruct the original continuous time signal from those samples using interpolation just like we've done before. All right. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let's get into what we call the spectral sampling theorem. Let's talk about the continuous time signal x of t, and we're going to assume that it is time limited. So here is my time limited signal x of t. It only has non-zero values between zero and tau. If it's time limited, then it has some Fourier transform that goes from minus infinity to infinity. So I've sketched just a little cartoon of maybe what that might look like. So this is what we call x of omega, the Fourier transform of x of t. From our work with sampling, we know what happens if we repeat the frequency content in the frequency domain. Anytime that I replicated this spectrum in frequency, that gave me samples in time. So you can actually think about, about it as periodic repetition in one domain gives me samples in the other domain. And so far what we've seen is periodic repetition in frequency gives me samples in time. Well, due to time frequency duality, it shouldn't be too surprising that if we periodically repeat in time, we actually get samples in frequency. So let's actually do that. Let's take our original x of t and let's create a periodic waveform by repeating this part of the signal every capital T units of time. So that's what I'm doing right here to construct the signal that I'm calling x sub t of t. This is now a periodic signal that repeats every t units of time. If I do this periodic repetition in time, guess what happens in the frequency domain? I get samples of my original spectrum. So by doing repetition in time, I get samples of the spectrum, these blue samples right here that sample the original spectrum. And I get samples of this original spectrum as long as I'm careful about how I repeat in the time domain. This had a width of tau before, so as long as my repetition, my period, capital T, is greater than tau, I don't have any collisions here, no weird aliasing occurs, and then I get samples that accurately describe my original spectrum. So this is an important criteria that we'll come back to soon. Also, if I've done this right, I can still look at this periodic signal and I can see my original x of t. Here's my original x of t just sitting there. So just like before, in the frequency domain, when we had repetitions of the original spectrum, I could see the original spectrum. The same thing happens here. Even though I have periodic repetitions of my original signal, I can still see the original time domain signal sitting right there. All right, so now let's actually work through the math to relate the samples, these blue quantities, of the spectrum x of omega to the actual spectrum x of omega, and then we'll come up with our spectral sampling criteria, basically an inequality that tells us how to sample in the frequency domain appropriately to capture all of the information. So first, let's just write down the definition of x of omega. This is just the Fourier transform definition right here. 
And then since x of t is only non-zero between zero and tau, I can simplify that pretty easily. So this is just the Fourier transform definition of how to compute the Fourier transform of a signal. Since x sub t of t is periodic, I can write down its Fourier series. All periodic continuous time signals have a Fourier series. So that's what I've written down here in the complex exponential Fourier series equation. And obviously the fundamental frequency omega naught is two pi over capital T. So this is just the Fourier series definition. And we can also go ahead and write down the equation for computing the Fourier series coefficients. How do I compute the dn? Again, this is just a write down an equation we go look up from our previous linear systems class. Here is the equation for dn. And again, since x of t is zero for times greater than capital T, I can simplify this top limit to tau to result in this equation right here. And then if, as we look at this, this equation right here looks very similar to this equation right here. The only difference is up here in the argument of the exponential. Instead of having omega, I have n omega naught. So actually this quantity right here, this integral, is actually x, capital X, evaluated instead of at omega, evaluated at n omega naught. I've replaced the omega with n omega naught. So we can actually rewrite dn, which are these samples right here, right, in terms of the spectrum. It's 1 over t times x of n omega naught. So now we've related the samples, the blue dots, to the spectrum just like we want it. So here's our relationship that relates the samples of the spectrum to the spectrum. It's simply sampling the spectrum at multiples of the fundamental and scaling by 1 over t. So this is how the samples relate to the spectrum. And this works out really well as long as we have satisfied an inequality. So we now have an equation that relates the spectrum of xt of t. And by spectrum, we mean these dn. Those are the, the quantities in the frequency domain spaced at multiples of omega naught. The spectrum of this is just the sampled spectrum of x of t, as we've quantified via this equation right here. But this is only true as long as we've done one thing correctly. As long as capital T was greater than or equal to tau. That was that whole starting assumption of when we periodically repeat in time, T was greater than or equal to tau. Let's think about this, though, in terms of frequency sampling, though. Since I have T, my sampling or my periodic repetition in time, we know how that's related to the fundamental frequency in the frequency domain that controls the spacing of the dn, right? t and the fundamental frequency are related by 1 over each other. So t is equal to 1 over f0. So this tells me I need 1 over f0 greater than or equal to tau. And then if I flip that inequality, flip both sides, then flip the inequality, this tells me that I need my fundamental frequency sampling to be less than or equal to 1 over tau. And this is the sampling property in the frequency domain that I've been going for. This is what we call the spectral sampling criteria. It says if I want to describe a continuous time signal by taking samples of its spectrum, I need to make sure that the spacing of those samples is less than or equal to 1 over tau, where tau was the time duration of the signal in the time domain. So this is the spectral sampling criteria I was wanting to derive.